before we go to our next guest, uh, and I highly recommend you go on to the app and, and read this piece by Graham Adam, one of our best writers. Um, but let me read the, well, the opening few paragraphs of his article, Hey Presto, Three Waters Becomes Five Waters. Nanaya Mahuta must not be able to believe her good luck in being blessed with the most gullible and incurious mainstream media any quiet revolutionary could hope for. Her good luck has continued after Parliament's Finance, Finance and Expenditure Committee dumped its report on Three Waters into the public arena last Friday afternoon. Such timing is normally seen by journalists as a screaming red flag that the government wants to bury contentious information. The New Zealand Herald undoubtedly thought it was on, onto the subterfuge. It quickly published an article that revealed co-governance had survived the select committee process, despite widespread opposition expressed in more than 88,000 written submissions. Senior writer Thomas Coughlin commented similarly in a tweet, uh, the 200-page select committee report on Three Waters um, only mentions three dissenting views, National Act Green. Labor's view can't even bring itself to use the co term co-governance once. And Graham goes on to write, the New Zealand Herald, Herald is correct to point out it's certainly news, but it's also completely predictable news. And Graham then says this, even Blind Freddy could see that Mahuta was never going to give up on the fundamental element of the reforms. Since the beginning, the Minister has made co-governance a non-negotiable bottom line in any discussion of changes to Three Waters. So I re recommend the rest of that piece to you. And I was alerted to this actually uh, Friday, Saturday, when uh, a friend of the programme and our pinch hitter for almost any show we've got, Tina Nixon, rang me. <coughs> and Tina's well, well placed to talk about this, this stuff. She's been involved in local body politics a long time. She's been involved in journalism a long time. And she's involved in a Māori Trust. So uh, Tina, to me, uh, knows uh, a lot in practical terms about what's going on with Three Waters and how current relationships and what you might call co-governance work. So uh, I thought we'd get Tina on the program now. G'day you, how are you? I'm very good, Sean. <laughs> All right. Um, Graham's used the headline, Three Waters Becomes Five Waters. Is that what's it's happening great. here? And what does he mean when he says that? Um, so basically, under Clause 4 of the bill, um, which is to give effect to, to Mana O T Y, which is basically like the sanctity of water, um, described by and a, a, as Māori understand it. So the, um, the the whole ethos behind this basically is is Māori have a special relationship with water, and this bill enshrines that, and uh, it means that everything that is done with water um, must first go through the lens of iwi and iwi alone. Um, and so that's the thing that I, I find... I well, that's find not even co-governance, is it? No, and that's the thing that I keep, I've been keeping saying to people. And to be fair, I add, tried to add some balance on the program when I was on last week and used um, Ra Smith, who is a kaumatua in um, the Wairarapa, mm. and, and he gave his other view, which he says, yes, we do have, we, we do, we, they're already doing some elements of Te Manaroti Wai with the regional council, and they formulate their ideas. Then they go back to the community and test them. And then they go back into the fray, basically. Um, but the problem it is, is, is a good iwi will do that. But this opens the way for an iwi who has, who is trying to get um, uh, some special advantages um, to be able to do that. And and I I'm not comfortable with that at all. Okay. Um, so I understand this iwi's this gives more power. Water. This is past co-governance. This is is it giving. Is, it, it, it is, it is past co-governance, and to be frank, and I'll be, I've been pretty honest about this, I don't have a huge problem with co-governance. I've sat in a yeah. number of institutions where co-governance co works really well, and yeah. actually it works really well often yeah. in the commercial setting where Māori are involved, yeah. and if you get them involved right from the outset, some good things can happen. Yeah. What this is is another whole level, um, again, where you have one group um, who, have a, who have now 
an, an enshrined right to have an exclusive say over water. And the interesting thing is, is under the Water Entities Bill, that um, everything and in the and in the Resource Management Act. Uh, Everything must be giving that must give effect to the treaty, not take into account um, the treaty like it used to be. It must give effect, effect to the treaty. But the, and the treaty is only different. a set of principles. How, well, gosh, this is so well, interpretive. It's just, it's just, yeah, and and um, it probably would have been useful to have uh, Stephen Franks on this morning too, and I think he 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 offers another. Um, we'll get him on. We'll get him on. I, I don't imagine and the this story will be a one. Day day. Yeah. yeah, the other one is Andreas from um, Castalia. So they, he's developed the alternative model um, yeah. for three Okay, waters. look, the other, the thing, other thing, the, is, the wanna, scope wanna, of this... Wanna, will, wanna, yeah, Tita, Tita, Tita. I'm doing the interview yep. now. Um, <laughs> the other thing is the scope of the water and the catchments that are covered in the report back. Yes. Has that increased? Yes, it has. And that was the, uh, you know, I'm the nerdy one on Friday and reading the whole damn report. And I got to about page 25 and started ringing people um, yeah. because that's uh, where it says, um, it, and this is direct from the state, from the paper, we also consider that Tamanaroti Y statement should apply to all water bodies and the water service entities, that's the, you know, the big, big balumbas that are going to manage everything, should give effect these statements. To this effect, we recommend in certain clause 44 to state that Tamana OTY applies to freshwater, coastal water, and geothermal water. And that was that um, holy shit moment, really. And I thought, wow, this is just like way big. And on Friday, I was like you, I was watching all of the media waiting for this to blow, and it didn't yeah. blow. And I was just like, what the hell is happening here? This, whether you agree with it or not, this is a fundamental change to the way we operate our natural environment for the betterment of all communities, and no one's picked it up. What are the ramifications of this? How the hell did that happen? No one I saw in any submissions raised this issue. So how, where, where did it come from? Well, I just get the feeling <laughs> William Gannon Ormsby must have been working on a secret report somewhere. Oh. <laughs> well, the only other one who's been actually watching this issue as closely as I have, probably even more closely, is Jason Smith. Yeah. Um, and um, he's he, he's the um, ex-mayor of Kaipara, and, and he is well over this. At okay, moment. well, we'll um, get and, him and on I'm, as well. But, but so yeah. what you're telling me, and I know we... We probably don't agree on co-governance, uh, Tina, because I put my faith not in the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, but the principles of equality before the law and universal enfranchisement that's got nothing to do with your race or who your parents or grandparents were. But that aside, you're telling me that the report back is like a huge enhancement of all the controversial aspects of Three Waters. Yeah, it is, um, and it's the first time, and please, if someone can correct me, um, it is the first time when Māori have been given a sole right over something to determine um, the impact of uh, 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 of what is going to happen with water for the rest of yeah. the community. Who says Māori yeah. have a special relationship with water? Um, well, that's a, that, that is something that it has has gradually become accepted. Um, and, and Stephen Franks and I have talked about this, and it's and there's some constitutional issues right, being sort of played out at the moment. And we saw the tea kanga thing with the um, the Peter Ellis case yeah. suddenly come into play. And and so there is a lot of this stuff that's actually happening, and they are fundamental changes to our law. Um, and people aren't looking at ramifications. Now, if we get to a point where everyone goes, oh, yeah, no, this can actually work, and we understand that, I'm okay with that. But what I don't like is the fact that this stuff is sort of, it's 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 there's sort of a subterfuge about it, and, and it's just sort of happening, and nobody's understanding what the implications are, and mainstream media are not picking it up. And so your general Joe Blow out there has no idea of what's happening and what's coming. And they're not having a say. This is going to become legislation. The House is probably going to go into urgency. And I noticed Chris Bishop was raising a flag on this the other day, and everyone's thinking that it'll be the three waters stuff that'll be a ramp. Yeah, well, I think we should rename it five waters. It is definitely five waters now. That is absolutely the truth. Now, the other thing is, I want to call out the Prime Minister. Um, she keeps telling everybody that rates bills will rise unless they put in three waters. 
And um, uh, I did have, I did, I'm sorry, I've, I feel like I'm being um, a, a disloyal servant, but um, I did listen to Radio New Zealand this morning for five minutes and heard Grant Robertson talk about Three Waters and he said that rates rise bills won't rise hugely under Three Waters. Now, there's a subtle, subtle shift because the Prime Minister says, we've been very clear here, she doesn't want the situation where we stand by and watch New Zealand, uh, New Zealanders' bills, rate bills go up. And that's what ha- happen if nothing is done about water infrastructure in New Zealand. So she's saying, if we put this water infrastructure in, rates bills won't rise. That is bullshit. It is absolutely 100% big pile of steaming turd but was, Were RNZ across the changes on the report back on Friday? Yeah, and, and I'm, Corin was, oh, he was starting to get a little testy with, with Robertson over this, but I just don't think he had enough um, information behind him to really question it. Mm. But Grant Robertson shifted from saying rates will, uh, bills will rise hugely if we don't do something to saying um, they, they, you know, they, they are going to, well, they won't rise as, as much. Mm. <laughs> All right. And, I just, and that's the issue, and that's the issue where you need to talk to Andreas, because yeah. he is really clear that the financials don't stack up, and that was the reason I chased... Yeah, well, I, right I don't think up. the democracy stacks up, personally, um, Tina, but, no. you know, OK. So, and I just want to go back to the guts of it, then. Um, yep. Basically, this means the report back from the Select Committee, which will be written into the bill and will go before a parliament, which will pass it, because Labor have a majority. It basically exactly. says Maori get first. They get to say what no, happens. No, they don't get first. They get the only say, only on, say. Um, a, on developing to Manarauti Wai, which Water. gives the status of the river and, and how it has to okay. be managed. And right? they are expanding this to cover fresh, all fresh water, Coastal water and geothermal Ooh. water. Apart Ooh. from the sky. And actually, that they're actually doing that anyway. They're probably the wanting the rain sky, that so. falls from, from the heavens above. So, and it's going to have impacts on fishing, recreational fishing. It's going to have... I'm, 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 I'm gobsmacked to see that there's nothing coming out of Taupo over geothermal. Yeah. Um, and how that... Or maybe that's because geothermal in, up in ta- ta- Taupo is... is yeah, well, Te Whaitara are already is, 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 uh, charging a huge levy on all non-Maori <laughs> users of water resources on Lake Taupo yeah. and its tributaries. They are, they are milking that for all it's worth. Yeah, so they're shoring this position up, but the coastal stuff that'll favour all coastal tribes, including you know Naitahu and and, and Napui and all of those ones that got big coastlines. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but you know, it's just the sneakiness of it. <laughs> yeah. Are they a pack of lying <laughs> bastards, Tina? They are a deceitful, lying pack of bastards, and they're lying over the um, the, the the premise that this reform will make rates bills cheaper. Mm. And um, and they are lying um, if they if they think that the um, that the, the whole thing is is financially stable. It's you know the, there are some major fish shops in this. All right. some really big. Technical so issues I'm going to I'm going to say to you, if this is not co-governance, if it's past co-governance, it is past co-governance. Okay, it is it is it the, the ceding of sovereignty over water to iwi in New Zealand? That is the that is what uh, Stephen Franks and I have been muddling over for a bit, and and is this really where it's going? And you would have to say on the face of it, it looks like that. And hey, if that's where it goes, that's where it goes. You, but it's really weird because you've got David Parker saying, "Don't want to sort these issues out with these reforms. We want the courts to decide that." And yet, that's essentially what's happening with Three Waters. It's very interesting that the Resource Management Act doesn't have co-governance. They have explicitly stated that they don't. So I can't understand why the journalists aren't also really questioning what I would see as a philosophical rift between Parker and Mahusa over these reforms. Yeah, yeah, and I did see that reported somewhere and I thought that is odd. There's obviously tension there. Hey, Tina, that's a great uh, brief. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you off here about that. I also like to say thank you for all the contribution you've been making. Um, uh, filling in when people have, have got other stuff to do, but you've been brilliant, and that is a hell of a story. As I said, I we talked about it over the weekend. I thought um, it would have broken by now, and it would be front page news all over this country, um, but it's Bye. not. Yeah, no. All right, Tina. Thank you very much. Uh, that is Tina Nixon, friend of the platform, former uh, local body politician, a Maori Trust uh, member, and there you go. And I just want to reprise what she said. 
The report back of the Finance and Select Committee, which has a Labour majority on it, Parliament, as to the controversial Three Waters legislation, has recommended, despite having no public submission suggesting it, that we now move immediately past co-governance into ceding sovereignty over water to iwi in New Zealand. Ceding sovereignty over water in New Zealand, waterways, fresh water, coastal water, geothermal water, we hand the sovereignty over. Not that we um, acknowledge the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, that we give effect to it, however we can possibly do that. And what have the mainstream media done? Oh, the Black Ferns one. Um, dissent possibly within the Labour government from David Parker about this. And my real fear is that this will be rushed through before Christmas. Um, but this is next level, as they say. This is next level. This is way past three waters. We're now into five waters. And it's not co-governance. It is the ceding of sovereignty to an ethnic group in New Zealand. And I don't see them. I'm sorry, you're not a treaty partner. You're an ethnic group.